So this <laughs> meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. It is now 615. If you would stand with me as Mr. Kidd leads us in the invocation and Mrs. Bush leads us with the pledges. Uh, if you'd like to, please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for your grace. Specifically, Lord, thank you for this past week, just being there for the Stockton family in their time of loss. Lord, just uh, thank you for your glory. Dear God, we, uh, we thank you for the, the honor and privilege to serve our students and for, for everyone here tonight, for their hearts of service for our students. As we enter the school year, Lord, we pray for our educators, our administrators, our staff, our, our police, our cafeteria workers, all of those, Lord, we pray that you just give them energy, give them direction, and just uh, be with them this school year. And Lord, we lift up our students, and we just pray for them and pray for their protection in this school year. God, tonight, uh, we thank you for those that have put so much time and effort into the budget. Uh, we, we pray for guidance and direction and being good stewards. And uh, we just pray for a productive meeting tonight, that you would give us uh, direction, discernment, guidance, and uh, just be here with us tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. <coughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Kidd and Mrs. Bush. We appreciate it. Uh, item 2A, citizen participation. Uh, Mrs. Godfrey, do we have anybody signed up? No. Very good. Item uh, 3A, Dr. Stockton, uh, consider ordering a bond election for the November 3rd, 2015. Thank you, Mr. Husbands. Uh, from 2003 to 2013, CISD gained approximately 16,000 students. To meet the needs related to this growth, the community passed two bond referendums, one in 2004, one in 2008. From these two bond referendums, 14 new schools were built along with numerous major additions. Additionally, CISD built an elementary school and completed several other major additions out of fund balance. CISD continues to experience heavy growth and is expected to have an enrollment of approximately 58,000 students on Monday. With growth in mind, in August of 2014, the Board of Trustees approved the agreement to hire Population and Survey Analysts, PASA, to complete a demographic study for CISD. That study has been completed. It is on our district website. The study indicates that our heavy growth pattern will continue within, uh, with expected growth of between 1,400 and 1,700 students per year for the next five years and increasingly even greater after that. That equates to the addition of approximately 8,000 students in the next five years. At the February Board of Trustee meeting, the Board of Trustees approved the 2015 Facility Planning Committee, comprised of 23 community members, for the purpose of, one, reviewing the district's projected growth and instructional needs for the next three to five years, and two, making a recommendation to the Board of Trustees to address those needs while impacting the tax rate as minimally as possible. The Facility Planning Committee met during a three-month period. Several, uh, there's one member here today, Scott Moore. Uh, uh, Scott Moore, you're representing the group tonight. Thank you for coming. Is it, did I miss anybody? Okay. Kim, I'm sorry, I didn't see you back there. There are several members here. <laughs> Scott Moore and Kim Lejeune, thank you for being here tonight. Um, at the June 16th CISD Board of Trustees meeting, the Facility Planning Committee uh, recommended a bond referendum in the amount of $510,970,173. That included, for new capacity, one new high school in the current Oak Ridge High School feeder zone, one new junior high school in the current Conroe High School feeder zone, one new intermediate school in the Oak Ridge High School feeder zone, two new elementary schools in the Oak Ridge High School feeder zone, build out of the remaining 200 seat capacity at Stewart Elementary School in the Wood Forest subdivision, that would take that capacity from 800 to 1,000, and the addition of 10 new science classrooms at Knox Junior High School in the Woodlands. To maintain current capacity, the committee recommended major classroom renovations, 
that would maintain capacity at these two facilities for the next 40 years approximately, and that is at Austin Elementary School and Conroe High School. To address district-wide needs of safety and security upgrades, vestibules, cameras, access controls, and fencing, district-wide needs of life cycle issues, those are drainage improvements, flooring, roofing, electrical painting, plumbing, chillers, boilers, those types of things that keep our schools in great shape. And priority one issues, and those are longer term maintenance or construction issues that fall outside the normal life cycle replacement. These are issues such as civil engineering issues, architectural issues, mechanical issues, electrical issues, plumbing, roofing, et cetera, and school buses. And lastly, the purchase of land for future sites. Additionally, I am recommending uh, the bond referendum include funds for a robotics lab at Caney Creek High School and the Woodlands College Park High School, and funds for CTE facilities at Caney Creek High School and Oak Ridge High School, specifically welding and cosmetology. The cost of this recommendation is approximately $5 million. The total amount for the two recommendations is $515,970,173. In planning for this bond referendum, my hope was that we would be in a position as a district to have surplus funds to complete some of the recommended projects and not include them as part of the bond referendum and thus avoiding the debt associated with them. Last year, we set aside funds for this budget, this year's budget. We did this to prepare for a possible funding reduction from the state, and this did not come to fruition, as you heard earlier from Mr. Rice. So those surplus funds are available. With all this in mind, my recommendation to the Board of Trustees for the 2015 CISD bond referendum is as follows. I re recommend that the Board of Trustees use approximately $25 million in surplus funds to fund several items that were included in the facility planning committee recommendation. These items are shorter term assets and ones that ideally aren't paid for by longer term bonds. I'm recommending the following items be removed from the recommendation and paid for out of surplus funds. Uh, first of all, the buses for a total of $6 million. Uh, the priority one items, and those are the items I just mentioned that are maintenance type issues that fall outside the normal life cycle replacement uh, again, there are issues such as civil engineering issues, architectural issues, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, roofing, those types of things. And that amount is, is $10,424,290. And thirdly, 30% uh, of the technology needs, which amounts to $9 million. And this represents the percentage of funds that go towards computers, which are shorter term assets. This results in a $487 million bond recommendation that includes all of the recommended items except for those that will be completed using surplus funds. The tax implications of this bond referendum using very, very conservative uh, parameters results in at the most one cent. Um, it is, is very, very likely that there won't be any tax increase associated uh, with this bond referendum. And that concludes my recommendation. Mr. Sanders, do you have a motion? Mr. President, I move that the Board of Trustees adopt an order calling a bond election for the Conroe Independent School District for the November 3rd, 2015 election. I have a second. Second. Having a motion to second, any discussion, questions, Dr. Stockton or anybody else? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like son. And it's unanimous. Listen, Dr. Stockton and Committee, those of you who are represented tonight, I would just like to say thank you for your hard work as well. Uh, it, it does not uh, uh, happen by accident, uh, and we are so blessed to have uh, responsible citizens that are willing to serve our district, and we thank you. Uh, Dr. Stockton, you and your staff have done a tremendous job, and I'm, I'm, I'm very, very proud, as always, of, of, of the leanness of the needing, you know, of the, of the taking care of needs in this district without it affecting the tax rate. So congratulations to you, sir. Would anybody else like to have a Mr. President, I would. Please, go ahead. As a board member for five years, I've seen the growth in our district. I'm proud to say that I've visited every school within the boundaries of our district. Having great schools helps to drive businesses and prosperity to our communities. The Conroe ISD schools have great teachers, staff and administrators dedicated to assuring that every student is given their utmost opportunity to be successful. 
Our students have well above average scores on Texas standardized exams compared to the state average. Our graduating seniors consistently score higher on both SAT and ACT college entrance exams. And each year, cadets and midshipmen enter our military academies from our district. I am very proud to serve on this board and I am proud to support this bond referendum. I think this bond referendum was very well thought out. Needs were properly identified. Funds were thoughtfully considered between paying cash and indebting our district. And I feel confident our district is well prepared to continue our long history of assuring all means all in preparing our students for their success is, successes in life. I would like to offer my personal thanks an acknowledgement for the hard work done by the facility planning, Facilities Planning Committee and the district staff and their many hours spent reviewing the PASA data, identifying the needs for new schools, major renovations, safety and security upgrades, and the district staff for also remembering our taxpayers and the minimal, if any, impact that it will have on our tax rate. Your combined efforts are very much appreciated. Anyone else? Don't know that there's much else to say. <laughs> well, it was very well put. Good uh, job, sir. Uh, I had to write it down, though. No, uh, that's uh, okay. Didn't miss well, a beat. I write it down. Uh, Thank only you. board member that was here in the last last bond issue when we proposed approximately a ten cent increase, mm -hmm. and and that never came to pass as well. So, Dr. Stockton, when I when you say conservative, unlike a lot of people. I believe I believe that, and I and I, I trust him as well. So I again congratulate you. And item three B, Dr. Stockton Tasby, uh, delegate selection. I will turn that over to Mrs. Gladys. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. President members, President husbands, and members of the board, this is the time of year. You know, you guys anxiously <clears throat> await who will get to be the delegate to the Tasby convention in October. Only one of you may be chosen although one of you may be um, an alternate. So this would be the odd time for you to select who will represent you in the TASB assembly at their convention in, October, in Austin. Uh, other board members, I would move that uh, we nominate Mrs. Bush. I second that. Okay. And uh, any discussion? No. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed like sign. And as far as the delegate is concerned, would anybody else have a motion or would you prefer me to? The alternate? The alternate. alternate, excuse me. <laughs> alternate, I, wrong word, I apologize. <laughs> Mrs. Powell, will you be at the there convention or will you be there? Uh, I will not be there. You will not, there. okay, will not. okay. Would you be honored to show? Uh, I, 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 I have yet. <laughs> you, haven't, you haven't cleared your no. text yet? I understand. Does anybody know they're going to be there? I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> I move Mr. Skeeter Hubert be elected as the alternate. Thank you. I, and I second that. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign in. Thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Bush and Mr. Hubert. You bet. Item, item four is the consent agenda. I've had no request to remove any items unless somebody has a wish to do so. We will proceed with that uh, uh, consent agenda as stated in the agenda. Motion. Motion. Second. And a second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Item 5A, curriculum and instruction elementary and secondary summer school report. Dr. Stockton. I'll ask Dr. Kathy Gibson and Dr. Curtis Nell to come make that presentation, please. Good evening, President, Husbands, Board Members, and Dr. Stockton. As summer comes to a close, Dr. Null and I would like to share with you the highlights of our summer school programs. We had eight summer school programs. I'm going to talk about each one of them at eight different locations. I'd like to uh, share with you tonight and introduce some key staff members that currently serve as assistant principals in our district, across our district at multiple schools, and um, I'd like them to stand as I introduce them. Sonny Nolan, uh, currently at Tuff, was our principal for Ford. 
Clinton Dulworth, currently at Broadway, was our principal for Hauser. Stacy Gomez, currently at Houston, was our principal at Houston. Sean Breeding, Breeden was our, is currently at Milam and served as principal at Milam. Krista McWilliams, currently at Reeves, served as Reeves principal. Kristen Belcher, currently at Hauser, served as Wilkinson principal. David Kite, who served as principal for ESY, could not be here tonight. He's helping his daughter paint her dorm. <laughs> Teresa Waller, who was currently assistant principal at Grangerland and principal at Grangerland this summer. And Larry Bradfute, uh, currently at Bosman, served as Travis principal. We also had our director of <coughs> elementary education, Shelly Winkler, our director of uh, federal programs, um, compliance and grants, Dr. Pam Zoda, and our director of curriculum instruction and staff development, Mrs. Edith Upshaw. And those three ladies worked together to make sure that this was a seamless summer and things ran very smoothly. Um, our Passport to Learning and Tuition-Based KidQuest Academic Program. This program, we have to um, enrich the skills of our students in the areas of reading, writing, math, and science. It is a half-day program. We had 1,250 1, students participate. Our bilingual program, the pre-KK portion of this program is actually required by the state. Um, we feel it's highly valuable, so we supplement our first and second graders. And we have, a, this is a very well attended uh, summer school se uh, session. It is a full day session, and we had 1,148 students. Our English as a Second Language program, this is the first year for this program. Again, the pre K and K is required by the state. And once again, we want, want to support these students. We add our first and second graders, and we had an, enroll, an, an enrollment of two, 222 students. Our, our reading and math camp targets our students that have to take the third administration of STAR. This was an SSI year that was on hold for mathematics, but, our, but we did invite those students because we certainly want to strengthen their skills. And our reading uh, students, we had 360 students, and our reading students sat for the, the uh, STAR test. Our KidQuest enrichment is what we call our high interest programs. And we had a GT summer camp, Backpacking Through the Mind, which uh, focused on higher level thinking skills, experiencing robotics, which is our FLL program, and DigiCamp, which focuses on technology. We had two separate sessions and 62 students participated. And our extended school year services are designed to minimize the loss of, loss of acquired critical skills of our students with di disabilities who have demonstrated significant regression or recoupment patterns. Participation at ESY is made by the ARD committee. We had 42 students that participated in the ESY program. Our expenditures, our state and federal sources, $884,556, uh, and our local sources, $368,887, and our tuition-based KidQuest, $21,592, for a total of $1,275,035. Uh, we served 3,084 students this summer by 257 teachers and 44 paraprofessionals and nine administrators. Thank you, Dr. Gibson. Uh, it's my pleasure to, to discuss with you our secondary summer school programs. And we have some great leaders here with us tonight that I want to introduce to you uh, that led each of our locations. Our, at Conroe High School, our district-wide summer school, uh, the principal was Wes Henson. Mr. Henson. At Pete Junior High, we had the district-wide ESY, and Crystal Coleman was our principal at Pete. She could be here. At Knox Junior High, uh, it was a junior high program that served Irons, Knox, McCullough, and York. Miss Tamara Good was our principal. Miss Good. At Pete Junior High, serving both Pete and Washington Junior Highs, uh, Mr. Christopher Kimple was our principal. And a new site for us this year, uh, over at Moorhead Junior High, serving those students from Moorhead, Keith Dupre was our principal. So we thank you very much. Outstanding leadership 
uh, from our principals at our summer school programs. When you look at just a summary of our total overall staff for secondary summer school, you can see there are 106 teachers and 18 paraprofessionals. Um, you'll also note three testing coordinators. Testing continues over the summer. Um, as Dr. Gibson mentioned, we have the, the SSI program, which would be the eighth graders taking a third test. But in addition to that, we have high school EOCs that continue over summer as well. So we have those folks come in to make sure that we uh, do that correctly in the summer. The financial summaries for secondary summer school, you will see here, um, expenditures from Title III for the ESL academies at $6,000. Uh, special education expenditures at $69,000. Um, and then secondary summer school expenditures at 281000 and that number is offset by the amount of tuition that is collected for those programs of 209000 So a total uh, cost for secondary programs at $356,000. I'll hit briefly just on the types of programs that we offer in summer school, and I would tell you that many of these are not required programs, and these are not programs that other districts do, and I think... Uh, it sets us apart, and I'm going to highlight a few of those at the end. But you know, first, we have our high school credit recovery for those students that may have struggled with the course throughout the school year, opportunity to go back and regain a credit along the way. Uh, the same thing that we have for the junior high level and then the eighth grade STAR Academy for those students that are still working uh, to pass one of their STAR tests. Uh, we do have GED programs in both English and Spanish, the ESY program, as mentioned. And then the final two here, the two that I really want to highlight. It's our high school initial credit courses and then the online accelerated math program. Um, that's a uh, course that's taught online and in person. It's a blended model. And these are those programs that we just mentioned, the first time credit offerings. This is an opportunity for students to choose to go to summer school and take a class to basically get ahead. They may be advancing within the course, as you see the online accelerated math programs where they're moving forward. That may allow them to get to a more advanced class in their future. Or you can also see these other initial credit courses. A student may choose to go and take Spanish II, for example, in summer school. That would free up a place in their schedule in future years to allow them maybe to participate in a CTE program that they really want to be involved in, or stay in a fine arts program, or perhaps an athletic program that when the schedules get tight, the fact that we offer this opportunity for students really opens a lot of doors for them in their future and so we're, we're proud of those so there's a lot of numbers on here and you can see that, that that there's a lot but the two i really want to highlight are down there at the bottom because when we think about high school and that number that we're always so proud of is graduation rate you know that's that's the end of everything that we do we want kids to graduate and we know the name of the game in high school is credits you don't graduate without credits and so if you if you look at all the summary of, of all of our summer school programs the bottom line here is we want students gaining credits, and you'll see 413 credits were earned for students doing the repeat, so that struggled during the school year, and 297.5 initial high school credits gained over the summer. So very proud of that. It definitely gives us a leg up uh, with graduation, so we're real proud. So just in summary, and you look at both elementary and secondary combined, and we talked about this last year, um, we basically run a school district over the summer. And uh, 4,800 students, 13 different locations. And there's a lot of hard work that goes into that. And Dr. Gibson mentioned a few, and I want to mention a few others. Our technology department does a fantastic job of supporting this. And so we want to thank Terry Ross, Terry McClarity, and their crew that do a great job. And then when you look at, many of you saw the new teachers that we hired this year for the school year, 525 new teachers, they were all being processed at the same time that we were hiring and getting paperwork done for all of these summer school folks. And we couldn't do it without a great human resources department. Dr. Sharples and Paula Green, we thank you uh, for, for the support and Dr. Bone uh, that you give us to allow us to do this. So uh, it's a team effort. Excuse me just a second. From the time that uh, uh, Dr. Gibson uh, mentioned your name until the last person mentioned, would you all stand again, please? Everybody that they mentioned. <laughs> Thank you all again. Thank you. Board President Prerogative, I get to embarrass you. <laughs> That's some awesome news. Three hundred credits that weren't wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be uh, obtained if if you didn't have it. That's awesome. 
Item uh, 7A, Dr. Stockton, uh, select construction manager at risk for New Elementary School in the Oak Ridge Feeder Zone. I'll ask Easy Foster to come present that item. Mm -hmm. President, husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure tonight to bring forward for your approval the selection of a construction manager at risk for a new elementary school in the Oak Ridge Feeder Zone. If you'll recall, in June, the Board of Trustees selected IBI Group as the architect for a new elementary school in the Oak Ridge Feeder Zone. Since then, we've prepared and published a request for qualifications for a two-step construction manager at risk selection process. Step one was very well responded to. We had eight companies respond. After reviewing each of these companies' qualifications, our selection committee narrowed the field to a short list of three firms. The following companies, Balfour Beatty Construction, Brookstone Construction, and Ellisor Constructors, Inc., were each shortlisted and invited to participate in step two of this process. Step two consists of pricing submission based on our criteria and an interview process where our selection committee gets to speak to and get to know each contractor and their ability and grade them on their performance. For this project, Brookstone Construction Managers was selected as the offeror who submitted the proposal determined to be the best value for the district based on our public's criteria and our final ranking evaluation. Texas Government Code requires that we the district make the rankings of the offerers made public within seven days of the contract execution or contract being awarded. And although this contract has not yet been awarded, this is, the district is publishing the rankings as determined by this committee and this, the rankings are attached in your package. Part of this process is also to allow or to authorize Dr. Stockton to negotiate and execute the contract documents with the selected contractor. At this time, I request your approval. I have a motion. Mr. President, I move we approve. Second. Second. That motion and that second. Any discussion? Questions? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Congratulations. Good job. Uh, item uh, 6B, uh, Dr. Stockton, uh, select a construction manager at risk for the Network Operations Center. And Mr. Foster. Again, at this time, I bring forward for your approval the selection of the construction manager at risk for our Networks Operations Center and to authorize Dr. Stockton to negotiate and execute the construction manager at risk contract. If you recall, in April, the Board of Trustees selected the IBI group as the architect for the Network Operations Center. Since then, we have published in a request for qualifications for a two-step process related to the selection of the construction manager at risk for this project. We had seven companies respond to step number one, and after reviewing each of these companies' qualifications, our selection committee narrowed the field to the three most qualified based on our published criteria. The companies selected for the short list and to, invited to participate in step two are Balfour Beatty Construction, Brookstone, Brookstone Construction, and Turner Construction. These companies were all invited to submit proposals as part of step two, which includes pricing and an interview process where our committee gets to know each contractor a little bit better. Balfour Beatty Construction was selected as the offeror who submitted the proposal determined to be the best value for the district based on our public's criteria and the ranking evaluations. And like before, the government code requires we publish those rankings uh, upon the contract award <coughs> within seven days. Although we haven't awarded the contract yet, we have published these rankings and they're attached in your board package as well. So at this time, we request your approval for this project. I have a motion. Motion. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you for that. Um, any questions? Discussion? I have one question, uh, Mr. Foster. Yes, sir. Um, in my professional capacity, I deal with a lot of builders and such, and it's, it's, it's a rather well-known fact that the bigger construction companies and Balfour Betty certainly qualifies as huge, okay, um, have introduced a new uh, requirement in their general contracting. And I wanted to ask you about it because I'm concerned about the, the duplicate expense, if you will, or at least the, the concern. Uh, the product is called SubGuard, and basically it is a insurance product that acts like a, it's a protection against a sub not completing their or their duties or, or their uh, project 
in, a, in either in a timely manner or if they can't finish or what whatever. And of course, you know, we all, always have the GCs bond the contract for our district. So I, I see it as a duplication, okay? And while it is standard in the industry that certain subs under a GC construction manager at risk contract bond certain subs, for example, like a mechanical contractor where the equipment is a, a large part of it, you know, you don't, you don't want a sub uh, going bankrupt underneath that without protection. And I understand that the sub guard expense is a little bit of overkill, especially when we're talking, you know, I mean, we've already approved them for the $5 million Woodlands locker room, girls locker room project. That's correct. And yet here, here we go again. And, and I'm concerned that we're paying that double expense. Can you help me there? Well, in, in this, I mean, that's an education we've, we've gotten through the process of the Woodlands High School project now. In, in, excuse me, let me, let me say, yes. am I even right? I mean, uh, that, that, is, that is what I understand to be the facts. Yeah. So uh, first of all, am I right? And second of all, are we double clipping for the bond? From, from what I understand, SubGuard is an additional insurance policy that is taken, taken or, or purchased by the general contractor in addition to the bonds that are required by law for our construction projects. Yeah, and it is, um, instead of bonding individual subs, this is an insurance policy that covers all subs within the project. Right. Um, so knowing, knowing that, we have specified the insurances that we require in our pricing step, in our pricing package that we sent out to all the GCs. Those packages went out, the list of specific general conditions items, as we, we call them, um, call out specifically any insurances that are not specifically specified by the district are to be accounted for in the contractor's fee. So it's not a fee, it's not an additional charge to us, it's a corporate decision on their part. If they choose to buy that insurance, great, but it's not something that weighs in on, on the rest of the general conditions and other insurance line items we grade and compare against. So it's something that comes out of their corporate fee, not fees relative to our job. Fee is 20% of our grading criteria, uh, and on the project for Balfour Beatty in particular was selected. The uh, pricing valuation, with that note taken into account, Balfour Beatty was the least expensive. Uh, so I view that as a corporate decision on their part. They're okay. spending their money on that insurance if they if they choose so, to. So just let me be clear, it, it, they're not adding it back to the subcontractor's uh, uh, bids. Okay, uh, the subcontractors aren't even required to show it as an expense. That would right. come straight through to us. Yeah, it would, in, in generally speaking, when we're talking to at risk bids such as this one, I am present at the time those bids are received by the general contractor. So if they're coming in, we collect them. We can audit them at the end of the process. If they're different than bids received on bid day, we will oh, be able oh, to. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I must have implied something. No, I just meant uh, they're not line items in the expense coming out of our pocket on top of the the, the construction manager at risk fee. That I will right. point out, though, the construction manager at risk fee, if it's, it's still in that number or if they're yes. still buying subguard even at their expense, it's still at our expense. It, I mean, you know, I, I agree yeah. they can spend their profits any way they want, and if they bid, if their bid or their fee is cheaper, mm -hmm. I still say there's a layer of overhead there that we, we could all save. Yes. And, but, but if it's not coming out of our pocket, it's in their fee and their fee was the lowest, Yes, or are you well, the, the, in, in addition to voted for them anyway, whatever, uh, then I have not a problem as long as we're not paying that fee. Well, and, and to clarify, the, the overall percentage fee that they're graded on that is the 20% of the overall grading process is a combination of their pre-construction pre services charge, their general conditions percentage, which is a, uh, the superintendent of the project trailer, the workers' comp insurance, builder's risk insurance, those types of things that we specify specifically. Yes. And then their general contractor's fee, which is their corporate fee on top of it. So right. we've established it so that their corporate fee is where that cost would land, not within the individual items we specify. And in this instance, the combined total of all those for Balfour Beatty was less than their competitor. Uh, I, I can live with it if it's coming out of their fee, although I still say it's a level of overhead that we don't need. But I, I, want, I want it... I just wanted on public record that should that change in any way if if some of these
products come in and, and, they, and they're in the expense side, I would really, really prefer to have that pointed out to me before I vote, okay? I understand that completely. Thank you very much. Any other questions, comments? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed like sign. Very much. Good job, Mr. Foster. Item 6C, capital projects update. Okay, tell us if our schools are ready to open. <laughs> no pressure there. No pressure at all, and I, and I do appreciate the, uh, the chuckles because I'm happy to report. Uh, we're going to start with Oak Ridge High School and Ninth Grade campus. Uh, this campus is ready for students to start on Monday. Yay! That's right. Uh, you can see from the outside of the building, uh, the equipment, the trailers, things like that, we're disappearing. We're looking at pictures that are a week old, so where you're seeing dirt now, there's beginning to be grass uh, poke up out of, out of the ground. Uh, by and large, the project is done. Our contractor will be on site with us for uh, the next 45 days or so in the overnights and weekends doing touch-ups and details, which are typical for projects of this mag magnitude. What we're seeing are the, the new science labs. You're looking at pictures now of the no. culinary lab. Uh, we expanded the library, we expanded the cafeteria, uh, we've added classrooms, we've added some administration space to all to accommodate the, the growing student population in the Oak Ridge area. At Oak Ridge Elementary, again, I mean, this project received a, uh, an overhaul of the entire uh, mechanical system, so it's everything above the ceiling got removed and replaced over the course of the summer. So you're seeing now the, uh, the finished product, everything's are, are cleaned up, going back together. Uh, furniture's back in classrooms. Uh, things are going well. The mechanical systems are running. Uh, over the next week or so, we will be commissioning those systems to make sure they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do when they're supposed to do it. And then our, we'll be ready for students on Monday. Yeah. Uh, in addition, as a, uh, this campus did not have a backup generator before, and at the completion of this project, we do have a backup generator. So our uh, food service, our critical components, our uh, technology systems, things of that nature are all tied to emergency power. Will that run the entire school or just critical systems? It'll run critical systems. Okay. Uh, Mitchell Intermediate, where we replaced the uh, roof this summer. Uh, there's not a whole lot more say, to say about that, but the roof is, sub, at this point, substantially complete. Again, just like any other project of this magnitude, our contractor is going to be with us to make sure things go right uh, as school starts, but there, we're looking at finer details and a ladder here and there. The, What's the uh, life on that roof? Say that one more What's time? the life on that roof? Life expectancy? We have a 20-year no dollar limit warranty on, on the roofs we installed. Yeah. And that is our update. Great job. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Uh, Appreciate all the work. Item 7A, adoption of the 2015-16 official school budget. Dr. Stockton. Okay, I'll ask Mr. Rice to come back to the podium and make that presentation. President and husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, it is my sincere pleasure to recommend that the Board of Trustees approve the 2015-2016 official school budget as presented and discussed in the public hearings. The budget is attached to this item in the format that is required for approval by function and also by function and major object. I recommend that you approve the 2015-2016 official school budget. Mr. Cuber, do you have a motion? Yes, sir. I move that the property tax rate be increased by the adoption. Wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Excuse me? Wrong. That's the next one. That's the next item. Motion to approve. Second. I my fault. Excuse me. You got a motion to second. <laughs> motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Sorry, Mr. Hubert, my fault. We're Great both job. excited about I, this. Item, uh, well, not really. 7B, consider and adopt uh, and, and set order of resolution 2015 ad valorem tax rate. Dr. Stockton. Mr. Rice. Once again, it is my pleasure to recommend that the Board of Trustees approve the attached order resolution to adopt a 2015 tax rate of $1.04 for maintenance and operations and $0.24 cents for debt service per $100 of taxable valuation to fund the 2015-2016 official school budget. As has been presented and discussed, the above noted tax rates are required to, to fund the maintenance and operation and debt service budgets for the 2015-2016 fiscal year. The total combined tax rate of $1.28 per $100 is the same as the prior year. I recommend that you approve the new tax rate. Mr. Hubert. 
<laughs> You're on. I move that the property tax rate be increased by the adoption of a tax rate of a dollar twenty-eight uh, per hundred, which is effectively a seven point eight percent increase in the tax rate. Second. Thank you. All, any questions? I have a question. Very good. <laughs> Why are we saying it's raised by seven point eight percent? Could you explain that to everyone yeah. in the audience, yeah, just so that we don't <laughs> have a misunderstanding correct. about the tax rate? Of our effective tax rate, and that is the tax rate that generates the same amount of money uh, that would be if it was last year. And since our tax values actually increased, uh, there is a, a detailed calculation that goes into that. So it's effectively raising the tax rate by 7.18%. And so that is why we're required for truth and taxation purposes. Thank you, Mr. Rice. I appreciate that. Thank you. It does sound confusing, though. Yes. <laughs> I thought it was the way you read it. No, I'm <laughs> Since I gave it well, to you, that wouldn't be true. <laughs> okay, uh, we have a second and a motion. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. And thank you very much. Uh, item 7C, transfer of unassigned fund balance to the debt service fund and capital projects fund. Dr. Stockton. Mr. Rice. <laughs> Once again, it is my pleasure to recommend the Board of Trustees approve the attached resolution authorizing the transfer of $16 million of unassigned fund balance to the Debt Service Fund and an additional $4.3 million of unassigned fund balance to the Capital Projects Fund. The above noted fund balance transfers of, six, of six, $16 million is required to service the debt during the 2015-2016 fiscal year and minimize the 2015-2016 tax rate. In addition, the $4.3 million is required to fund the Capital Projects Fund as of August 31st, 2015, and that $4.3 million is for projects that have been previously been approved. I recommend you, you approve the fund balance transfer as set out in the attached resolution. Another motion. Motion. Second. I second the motion. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Opposed to like sign. Thank you very much. Item 7D, Chapter 41 Status. Dr. Stockton. Mr. Rice. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, it is my pleasure to recommend that the Board of Trustees select option three, which is purchase attendance credits from the state to reduce to reduce its wealth per resident student. And if you think the other one was confusing, just let me finish and I'll sum it up. <laughs> Conroe Independent School District's wealth per resident student and weighted average daily attendance, which is WADA, will exceed the third equalized wealth level of $319,500 as established by the TEC, or Texas Education Code. For the upcoming school year, 2015-2016, the first equalized wealth level is currently estimated to be $514,000 per WADA and the third equalized wealth level will remain at $319,500 per WADA. And this is where we fall in. Districts whose identified wealth level falls between $319,500 and $514,000 per WADA will not pay recapture unless their adopted tax rate exceeds the compressed rate plus six pennies. Conroe Independent School District's wealth per resident student is estimated by TEA at 401,654 per WADA. This is an administrative step for those districts who fall within those guidelines. Uh, we will not have to re pay recapture back to the state. So I recommend you select option three, which is purchase attendance credits from the state to reduce our wealth per resident student. I have a motion. I move we approve. I second. Second. Any discussion? Questions? So, Mr. Rice, as I understand it, uh, the WADA is between three nineteen five and five hundred fourteen thousand. You do not have to reimburse back to the state, and because ours is at four hundred one six fifty four, we don't. But we do have to make a, re a recommendation of what we would do should we go over that four hundred one thousand. Is that? That's my paraphrased feedback of what you said. Yes, I just want to know if I'm right or not. Very, very close. Where did I get wrong? Uh, yeah, we would not have to pay recapture unless we exceeded 514000 514, That's right. Or, oh, I'm sorry. Our, I or we exceeded our tax rate 
by our compressed rate plus by six, six pennies. Right. So we're not at either one of those, <coughs> points, so we will not have to pay redemption. Thank you very much. It is confusing. Good one. <laughs> awesome. A motion to second. Any further discussion? Yes. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. And passes. And uh, 7E, financial reports. Mr. Rice. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just did that for you. <laughs> it is my pleasure again to be here to present the <laughs> very pleasure, my pleasureful evening to present the financial statements for the district uh, for the month of July. These statements will include the general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we'll look at this evening is the balance sheet for the month of July. The balance sheet includes our assets, our liabilities, and our fund balances. Uh, looking at our largest asset, our cash and investments, oh, our cash and investments, and we'll concentrate on the general fund. We have cash on hand of $500. We have bank deposits of $3 million. We have investments in our external pool funds of $27 million. We have funds in our Capital One Now account of $69.6 .6 million. We have investments, uh, various investments that are at less, less than one year now, $19.5 million and longer-term investments one year and more of $41.1 million for total cash and investments in the general fund of $160.2 million. The next statement we'll look at is our income statement. The income statement includes revenues, expenditures, and fund balances. And revenues are broken down into three categories, local and intermediate sources, state program revenues, and federal program revenues. Our local source of revenues is local and intermediate, so we'll look at that. We'll look at the detail. Now, as we look at that, in the general fund and debt service fund, the largest uh, generator of revenues is our property taxes. In food services, revenue comes from food sales. And self-funded insurance comes from premium contributions. We can also look at our expenditures at the functional level for each one of the funds. As you can see in the general fund, instruction is the largest uh, category of expenditure. Mr. Rice, could you go back a couple of slides when you talk one more? I'm just, not that one. <laughs> Where you talked about the uh, investment income? Oh, uh, it was a half a million dollars in investment income. Sorry. Yeah, five hundred fifteen thousand in the general fund, but it says. 634 in the debt service fund. Are we arbitraging anything? That's uh, that 634 is actually actually comes from our refundings, as we've done the oh, refunding sales. Oh, because you've got it. Okay, we've thank got you. It, we've thank got you. It, I got it. I got it. Okay, thank you. I didn't really think we had arbitrage or anything like that. Okay. Uh, our projected general fund balance. We're still looking at an increase to our fund balance of uh, a little over 15 million dollars. In our debt service fund balance, we're looking at a, a decrease of about $1.5 million. Our child nutrition fund balance, we're forecasting a, a projected decrease of $373,000. Can you hold up right there? Yes, sir. What, where's the level where we have to be on, on uh, specifically because this is federally granted? Yes. You know, we've, yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're, uh, What's the? How do you? We cannot have more than three months worth of expenses yes. and fund balance. And as you can see, in 2013, we we exceeded that, mm -hmm. and so we had working with Child Nutrition, we were able to uh, reduce that uh, fund balance by buying new equipment and, and areas like that. Thank you. Our self-funded insurance for the month of July, we had total revenues of 2.9 million dollars. We had total <clears throat> expenses of 3.8 million dollars. For revenues under expenses for the month of $902,000. Uh, for the year, total revenues of $32.3 million. Expenses of $33.7 million. For revenues under expenses so far this year of $1.4 million. Uh, participation at our wellness centers. For the month of July, we had 443 participants at Oak Ridge, 156 at Conroe for a total of 599 visitors. For the year, we've had 6,000. 906 people visit our wellness centers. Our investments for the month. We ended June at $295 million invested. At the end of July, we had $243.7 million. 
the WAM of our pools and Capital One investments is one day, and those are yielding right about 19 basis points. <clears throat> the WAM of our investments that are less than one year is 253 days, and they're yielding a little over 37 basis points. The WAM of our longer term investments is 776 days, and this is the first time we've been able to show a, a one on there, yeah. so, so a little over 100 basis points or 1%. So that's good. So the WAM of our total combined portfolio is 144 days, and that's yielding 33 basis points. And our benchmark, which is the 90-day T-bill, is less than one basis point. Our there you go. Thank you very much, Mr. Rice. Uh, you're, good job. I believe, uh, in fact, that no executive session is needed. Uh, I would entertain a motion to. Yeah. And I second that, and we are adjourned. School starts Monday. Thank you. Good job. Great job. Ready on Monday. Nine o'clock, please. Starts at 9.30, but we ain't getting there at 9.00.